You know, there's not a lot of things that like to be kept in the dark, but mushrooms is one of them. And on this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna grow mushrooms in this garden bed here. And I'm gonna give away some mushrooms on this video. The mushrooms you can get on my website, there's a link in the description. But on this video, I'm gonna give away some shiitake, some pink oyster, and some wine cap mushrooms to one lucky subscriber. But remember, you have to be a subscriber to be in the draw, to win. So sit back and enjoy this video. Be entertained, be educated, and be inspired. And welcome back to the Weedy Garden to another episode where we can grow our own food, make us healthy and strong and happy and all that. This bed here, I'm gonna turn into a mushroom bed. Just gonna level this out and put wood chips in this bed. So I'm gonna start with a log. So I'm gonna go and get my log out there in the sun there. I'm just gonna chop it up to length and clean it up a bit and we'll take it up to the garden. See, when trees are growing, they don't want the fungus to attack them. So the, the wood produces antifungal properties. And so you want to let them sit here until that chemical kind of dissipates. And um, because if we put our dowels in already in this wood, that antifungi property of the wood, that chemical in the wood, it's going to kill the fungi spores. So I'm going to let it sit here for a week or two weeks. these wood chips in the bath and fill the bath up with water and let it sit for three days because I need to sterilize any sort of fungus spores that are in this wood chips already. I need two of those. Go and get another one. Now I'm going to fill this up with water because the water is going to drown any fungal spores that are in the wood chips already. So basically we're going to kill off any of the fungus that's already in there because we want to inoculate it with our new, our new spores, our edible spores. So I'm going to totally submerge this in water and then I'll let it sit for three days. All right, look at that. Now I want to make sure that these wood chips stay underwater. So I'm going to put this on top, this is my top from Wormville, I'll put that on top and then I'll put some heavy weights. I might just put a bit more water until it starts to overflow I think. Get all the air out of it. It's going to kill all the fungus spores that are in there already. And we don't want any foreign spores in our wood chips, we want our own spores in the wood chips, right? So I'll let that sit for three days, we'll come back and I'll take the plug out. Three days have gone by. Find the plug here. There it is. Beauty. Here we go, that'll slowly drain out there. Oh look, little witchetty grub didn't survive. Small. Chuck him in the compost. Oh. If you can't get yourself a big mound of wood chips like this, you can just go to the garden store and buy bags of wood chips. They're quite expensive compared to a big pile of wood chips. That's pretty good. That'll stop me just cutting my, cutting my hands and stuff.
Beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. See, see, I do have sugar cane mulch, because that's what that is. But I'm not going to go around and chop all this up and run over it with my lawnmower. That's too hard. No, no, no. See, instead I get it from the shop where it's all chopped up. See, ready to go. And you can also use hay. I'm going to use hay as well. So I'm going to make a combination of hay and sugar cane moss. And uh, you can also use cardboard or newspaper. I know that in Australia, all the newspaper ink is actually plant-based, so that's safe for the garden. If you're gonna use cardboard, you gotta make it into little tiny strips, you know, you gotta shred it. Same with the newspaper. That's why I just like to go and buy a bag of sugar cane mulch and a bale of hay. It makes life a lot easier. We're getting really close to planting our mushroom spores now. I'm just going to give this a little bit of water. And because I'm going to plant three types of mushrooms in this bed, I'm going to have wood chips on this side, and I'm going to have sugarcane mulch and hay on this side, and then I'm going to have my logs piled up on the pyramid on top here. So I'm just going to mix a bit more of this hay in with my sugarcane mulch. And I've got to give it a good water, really good water and mix these up so they're kind of a bit mixed up. Hay and sugar mulch mixture. Creates that diversity, see? I'm gonna mix a bit more sugar mulch and a bit more hay together. Put it in a bit of layers. I give it a bit of water each time I do it. And then I'm gonna put my mushroom spores in there. See, when you're making mushrooms, you don't, you don't have to think about compost and fertilizer and stuff like that because they're eating this, they're eating the wood chips and they're eating the straw. That is their food. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice little bed. Even I feel like sleeping in this one. So I've used one bag of sugarcane mulch and half a bale of hay on half, half of this tank. In Denmark, they make roofs for houses out of straw. So if you don't do it properly, then you're going to get it acting as a roof, so you won't get any, any moisture from the rain down into your hay. So you want to sort of make sure it's going all different directions, so it eventually finds its way down. So I'm going to have my wine caps in here, and my pig oysters over here. Oh yeah. And then I just sprinkle them on. Mm. It's basically just um, grain. Grain with mushroom spores in it. So I just sprinkle that through. It's like I'm feeding the chickens really. It's like you're planting grass. That's nice. I'll um, just give it a little bit more. And then I'll put a, another layer of hay on. Yeah, chuk 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 chuk. Yeah, chuk 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 chuk. More hay, hey, more hay, hey, yeah, hmm? more water, yeah. And the last, oh, I'll give a bit of water. Yeah, more water. So it's really important that these don't dry out. So I'm gonna give them nice little water maybe twice a week. And about four to six weeks, we'll come back and we should be able to start seeing pink oyster mushrooms popping out everywhere. But I'm not finished yet. Nice little mushroom kit there, see? I'm going to give it a nice, nice big amount and I'm going to mix it all in with my hands. And then I'm just going to go like this. There we 
we go. That's how you plant mushrooms. So now we've got our wine caps over there and our pink oysters here. Now it's time to put in our logs so I can plant the shiitake mushrooms. Okay, so because my logs have been sitting in the tunnel for more than two weeks, they're starting to get a bit dry. So I've just been letting them soak here for a few days to fill up with moisture again. So when I put the, the dowels in them, they're going to be going into a nice moist bit of log, just like they would be in a sort of a dark, damp forest. I'll take these ones here now. See, I've just stacked them up like that, but I don't know if it's such a good idea because I think they're going to be too dry. See how they're all sitting up there and there's a lot of air coming through it all? I think the whole thing's going to dry out and they're going to die. So I think I'm going to take them and lay them side by side and stack them on top of each other so they're all touching together and keep that moisture. So these mushroom kits are pretty cool because they've got everything in them that you need, right? You've got your mushroom spores. They're like all in little dowels. See the mycelium starting there? It's shiitake mushrooms there. And in the box comes a drill, which is the same size as your dowel. And then you've got a little dipper here and some wax. So I'm going to start a fire and melt the wax. In the meantime, I'm going to drill some holes and hammer my little dowels in here. It's a lot easier to make a little mark with some tape on your drill so you know exactly how far you have to drill into the log, see? And then away we go. Every 10 centimetres or so. These mushroom kits, they come with a little bag of wax as well and a little, uh, like a little sponge. You use that to cover up the holes that you've made where you put your dowel in, where you put your, your spores in. So I've just put a bit up in my carp, and I'm just going to boil the billy and put some water in here and melt that so I can use that later. But I'll just go back and finish drilling holes. So when you drill your holes, you want your holes to be about 10 centimetres apart and then you want to do another row crisscross. So you've got like 5, 10 centimetres between each hole. So now it's time to cover up all these little holes. And I cover them up with wax. I've just melted some wax in the fire. And I've got this little sponge here that I'm gonna just dip on the holes. And that just basically keeps the moisture in. It doesn't keep the other fungus out or anything like that. It just keeps the moisture in the log so it doesn't dry out. And I'm not gonna do any on the end there. A lot of people talk about putting wax on the end to stop any other fungus coming in. But to be honest, this fungus that's already in here is going to overpopulate the log within no time. So any other fungus is going to have a problem trying to establish itself anyway. And um, you, want to have, you want to have the log to be able to breathe a bit. See, when a tree is growing, it's got a compound in it. It's called phytoelexins. And that's a chemical that um, basically combats the fungus. So when the tree is alive, it doesn't want to be eaten alive by the fungus. It's, they're more prominent in softwood because the softwood needs more of these uh, compounds to combat the fungus, because it's a soft wood, you see. So it's a really good idea to, um, to use a hardwood, because it lasts longer and the fungus loves the hardwood. So if you're living in Australia, any kind of hardwood like uh, red gum, flooded gum, any sort of gum tree, but I've got a list on my website, actually. If you go to my website, which is in the info tab up there, there's a list on that page of the recommended trees to use if you're an Australian because I only know the ones in Australia or, um, but if you're living in Europe things like maple 
um, pecan, oak, of course. Any sort of hardwood is good for growing mushrooms in. I think I'm finished. And also try to avoid um, wood that's got thick bark on it as well, because you want to you want to be able to put your dowel in and seal it off. If you've got thick bark, the bark and the bark releases, it leaves your little dowels sort of vulnerable. So hardwood with a nice thin bark is good. I like to think like a forest. It's damp and cool and dark. Mmm, fungi, they're the decomposers of the forest, the dead forest transforming all the wood back into nutrients that the forest will eat again a big cycle of life and I want to bring that environment into my space and nurture it see if I create the perfect environment for fungus by mimicking a wet dark forest then that's what I'll do see here in the weedy garden there is no wet dark forest so I'm going to make one myself what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the I make it with some of these pipes here. Okay, I'm, I'm going to mimic a forest. Let's see, this is cool. So, okay, watch. Have a get about. So I've got an automatic sprinkler on here and um, because I can go away and leave it now, all I need to do now is put the cover on it because I want this to resemble a little ecosystem, a little forest ecosystem. And I want it to be like underneath the canopy, which would be dark. So I need to put some shade cloth on this now. Right now I'm just testing my timer to see if it works. It goes off and on and I can program it to whatever I want, but I think I'll let it come on probably for about half an hour, twice a week if it doesn't rain. I put this extra one on top to keep the shade cloth from getting hit by the sprinkler because if it does that it, then it just sags here in the middle and the water doesn't get up and spray around the whole thing. So I'm going to put the shade cloth on now. The sun doesn't get down here so this could be my little opening. Mushroom spores just like seeds, very sensitive. So. That's why I'm giving them the best possible opportunity to succeed in here by making it nice and moist, no direct sunlight. They like about 20 degrees. When it gets about 20 degrees, they'll start to flush. And I can hopefully expect to probably get four or five flushes a year. Um, and these ones, I mean the logs, they're gonna be flushing. <laughs> they're gonna be flushing for the next five to six years uh, without me really doing much about it at all. As long as I keep the water up, they're gonna just be fine in here. See, I can just stick my head in here and I can just come in here and harvest, harvest my mushrooms and reach them from all angles. I can lift it up all, all over the place. And then when I'm finished, I can just put it down again. Like that. And, uh, I might actually just put another bit of white shade cloth on top so, so it doesn't get so hot in here in the summertime. Because the white will reflect the light instead of attracting the light. Let's see if the little sprinkler works. Here we go. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. My perfect little environment for mushrooms. Mushrooms, 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 mushrooms. So the mushroom competition. So who's gonna be the lucky winner that wins this little pack, this little three pack of mushrooms here? All of these, I'm gonna to give to one lucky subscriber. If you can write in the comments how many times I said the word mushroom or mushrooms, that's two right there. Write your answer in the comments. All the subscribers that have the right answer, I'll put them in dad's hat. And I'll pull out a lucky winner who will receive these in their post box. But if you're not the lucky winner, don't be despaired because you can still get these mushrooms on my website and you can get them at a 5% discount. So remember to use the promo code Weedy Garden and you'll get 5% discount off these. And when these mushrooms get established in here, I'm gonna take, you can see all the mycelium after a week or three, 
Oh, I'm going to come in and look underneath here and I should be able to see all the mycelium working its way in. But then I can actually take a handful and go and plant them in my garden. I'll show you. This would be a great spot for some mushrooms when they get established underneath my lime tree. When my mushrooms get established over there in my mushroom bed, I'm going to take a handful of those wood chips and bring them out here and set them in here underneath the vegetables. If I put some mushrooms in my garden bed, and it doesn't dry out, when it hits 20 degrees Celsius and there's enough moisture in the area, then they'll flush. So I'm going to put some in my garden beds as well when they get established in my, in my mushroom bed over there. I could always put some mushrooms in here underneath my popcorn cashew as well because it's always shaded in here. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about our wonderful little mushroom friends. They're good for your body. Some of them are good for your mind. Beautiful, healthy little mushrooms. Enjoy your gardens. Enjoy your lives. Have a nice day and I'll catch you later. If you want to hang around for another minute, I'll show you a little trailer for my movie. Mother Earth, thank you. You are wonderful and beautiful, and I love when you wear green. You wore green the first time I saw you. So every time I see you in green, it reminds me of how I felt at that moment.